The gospel text of today, which is taken from the gospel of Matthew, chapter 16, verses 21 to 27, follows immediately after the questions which Jesus asked his disciples, who do you say I am? And Peter's answer, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. At that time, at the end of that text, Jesus had said to the disciples, do not tell anyone that I am the Christ. In today's reading, we will be given the answer in detailed form as to why he gave what is known as the command to silence. Why did Jesus not want people to know that he was the Christ? In a line, the answer is, he did not want them to misunderstand the kind of Christ that he had come to be. And so today's gospel text begins by Jesus explaining the kind of Christ that he has come to be in what is known as the first passion and resurrection prediction in the gospel of Matthew. In it, Jesus gives his disciples an answer as to why they must not proclaim him as the Christ just yet because the time to proclaim him as the Christ will come when he says in the gospel text of today, he will go up to Jerusalem, he will suffer grievously at the hands of sinners, he will be handed over to his executioners, he will be scourged, he will carry his cross, he will be crucified, he will die on the cross, be laid in the tomb, and he will be raised again. Jesus never spoke about his death without in the same breath also speaking about his resurrection. And so that is why whenever Jesus predicts his passion, he predicts his resurrection. And that's why I am careful about calling it the passion and resurrection predictions. And today's gospel contains the first of these. And today's gospel also gives us now a further insight into why Jesus did not want his disciples to tell others. Because as soon as the disciples hear it, again Peter, the same Peter who had answered that Jesus was on God's son and the Christ, is the Peter who says to the Lord, Lord forbid this should not happen to you. I do not want you to be a suffering Messiah. I want you to be a glorious Messiah. I want you to be a Messiah who will come with a sword. I want you to be a Messiah who will gather only the righteous. I want you to be a Messiah who will overthrow with violence the Romans and scatter them. That's the kind of Messiah whom Peter the same Peter who had answered through divine revelation because the divine revelation which God gave him had not percolated into Peter's heart. It remained only on his lips and in his mind. It was an intellectual understanding which manifested itself in the words that Peter used, but it had to go into his heart. And this is what Jesus wanted. And so he has got to correct Peter. He has got to tell Peter that he is thinking not as God revealed to him, but he is thinking now as everyone else is thinking. And therefore, he is on the side of the world. He is on the side of power. He is on the side of might. He is on the side of riches. He is on the side of glory. And Jesus is exactly on the opposite side. And so Jesus has got to correct this misunderstanding by Peter and not only Peter but even the other disciples who possibly would have said the same as Peter said. And the Lord says, no, unless I suffer, die and buried and raised, you cannot proclaim me as the Christ because that is the Christ the Father has sent me to be. The world 
will be saved not through domination. The world will be saved not through rules and regulations. The world will be saved not by frightening people, but the world will be saved through love. And this is what Jesus manifested. And then in the third part, after correcting Peter, Jesus issues an invitation. And the invitation is to anyone who dares to follow him. What does a person who dares to follow Jesus must do? A person must first deny him or herself. To deny him or herself means to count the self as nothing. If there is no ego, if there is no I, then where is the question of carrying a cross? So Jesus was aware that once a person denied him or herself, there would be no question of the heaviness of the cross because there is no self. So the cross cannot become heavy. And that is why Jesus is clear that you do not first Take up the cross. No, you first deny yourself. When you have denied yourself, when you count the self for nothing, then no matter how heavy the cross might seem to others, to you who have no ego, who have no self, it will be light. It will not even be a cross. And this is the invitation which the Lord is inviting us, each one of us to today. However, like Jeremiah in the first reading of today, we might find it very difficult. So Jeremiah is complaining to the Lord that he has been seduced by the Lord. Every side people are saying, Jeremiah, don't take that way. Don't take the way of self-abnegation. Don't take the way of humility. Don't take the way of giving up Take instead another way, the way of accumulating, the way of having, the way of prestige, of honor, of pride. Take that way. It is so much easier. And Jeremiah says that he is tempted. And yet the Lord keeps appearing to Jeremiah and keeps inviting him. Not forcing him, not coercing him, not putting pressure on him, but inviting him to take the other way. And the, Jeremiah says that he is, in a way, so motivated by the Lord that he cannot but take the Lord's way. Will you hear the invitation of Jesus asking you to deny yourself and only then and only then take up your cross. And will you like Jeremiah, who still hears these two voices, walk the way of the Lord?